Hi, thank you for joining me today. It is Thursday. This Today's session is about life coaching and I am continuing my series on finance slash money, money matters. And so from last week, I decided to put down as far as our topic or excuse me, as far as a phrase, um, financial focus for the future. So thank you all for joining me today. I am Jackie Horton. I am your virtual wellness and health specialist. And this is my channel where I promote wellness and health. I amplify long lasting solutions and uplift uh, things that um, we can build on together. All right, I was turning up my volume because people said my volume was not good the last time. So I apologize. So. Thank you for joining me today. So today is Thursday, life coaching session on finance. And as you recall last week, um, I um, talked from a different viewpoints and I used the book, Money Came by the House the other day, a guide to Christian financial planning and stories of stewardship by Robert W. Katz, Katz, K-A-T-Z. I'm sure you can use any other types of resources that you desire. I just prefer to use this one and I have a few other ones that are along that line that I prefer to use. So, as you recall, I used, I read a story um, that Robert had put in his book as if money had come to his home to have a discussion with him. And at the end of that, that discussion with him and money, um, he learned a couple of things. One is money is used as a resource and also money, if you put too much priority in it as far as it being your guide, it, it, it will expose the things that you need to work on, the things that are not you know, of a Christian faith, the things that are not of a good heart person. So with that being said, financial literacy, just kind of like to do the overview of this again, financial literacy is the possession of skills, knowledge, and behaviors, possession of skills, knowledge, and behaviors that allow an individual to make informed decisions regarding money. Okay. And so when we think about that, it is broken down into four columns and how we can display these skills, knowledge, and behaviors. One is creating a budget. The other one is planning for retirement. And we now have to plan for retirement more so than ever before. And even the generation behind us will definitely have to plan for retirement. The next thing is managing your debt and tracking your, your spending, your personal spending. So what I like to do when I coach a person on finance is that I like to have them think about their past, their present, and their future thoughts and perception as re in regards to finance, in regards to money. Okay. And the reason I like to do that, because in some way, form or another, we kind of overlapped what we've been oriented to do as far as with money, what we learn to manage differently in the present and what our desires are in the future. And by thinking of it in the past, present and future context, what I discover as a coach is that we do overlap, but we, we do sometimes may fall back into our default when we start to feel a little pressure, a little anxious, or a little um, fear regarding money. So with that being said, um, I always ask my clients to write a sentence, you know, that's really general regarding, you know, their perception of money, their perception of finance. And so I sort of wrote one for myself and, um, I'll share this example and, you know, hopefully this will lead you to do, do the same for yourself. My example is, and what I did feel was, I once saw money only as a means of survival. But today, money is a good resource to build upon for a life that provides more than enough for me, my family, and for his will, meaning God, his will in my life. So that's my example of how I use the past, present, and future perception of money to me. And I remembered my sister and you know others and my companion would sort of laugh in how I used to, with direct force, 
say the word money. And when I start to dive more into that and that thinking process and speaking to when I had a coach, what I learned was a lot of times my thoughts around money was around fear. And it truly was around, I must have this to survive, which is natural to think of money is needed to survive. But we also know that people who don't have money are surviving. So I needed to turn and change my perception about that just so I can be more clear and that I can be more um, uh, friendly and a better steward of my money. So that's an example I would like to ask you all to try out to use, write a sentence around your perception of money that includes your past, your present and your future. OK. All right. So. The one thing that's really interesting about money and when we think about the perception, you remember the, the cycle of, of, of emotions, the cycle of behavior. What we learn is that the more we talk about it, for some people, you know, some, some strong feelings of fear, survival uh, may rise and even start to re-entrap them, especially if they've been out and especially if they've been very successful with making money. So... With that being said, I talk to you know clients about recurrent themes, and I look for emotions and behaviors and outcomes that come over and over as it relates to money in order to see where the cycle of, you know, not destruction, but the cycle of just known behavior needs to be interrupted and brought to the person's forefront in order to release him or her from this fear of losing money. And this fear of having, you know, survival, you know, tactics when it regards to money. Because we do want to be good stewards of money, but we also want to be friendly with our money and also giving. I remember once my pastor said, I don't even know if you can really truly walk this life of faith as a Christian without being a giver. And that really hit home for me because I wasn't really a giver. I gave when a person needed but I really wasn't just a person who would just buy lavish, you know, presents, you know, and things like that for others. So I thought that was a great um, comment that stayed with me as it relates to money. So when I think about, you know, the behaviors, the outcomes and emotions that could continue to reoccur with, you know, clients that I work with on finance, feelings of what I found is common feelings of they may withdraw. They may get really angry and impatient as well. They may become extremely selfish or just selfish in general. You don't have to be extremely. But the one that seems to get really um, ignored is the one, the person who sacrificially just goes into a place where they will give until it hurts them. And that one is always missing when it comes to people of faith, when it comes to people who are the older child in the family, when it comes to people who just naturally are um, of giving in nature, somehow they have associated that as a as a as a as a plus for them when they give sacrificially in a place, sacrificially in a place where it actually ends up hurting them and the family. And we can talk more about that. So here's what I want you to do for next week. When you think about the four behaviors that of evidence of showing financial literacy, I like to take only the word, the action word from each of those columns. Create, plan, manage, and track. And I want you to think about what you feel and think as you think about those, I'm pardon the, the paper, as you think about those four action words. Create, plan, manage, and track. If nothing changes in you, then fine. But I do know when I push on those words in the individual client sessions, and even my group client sessions, I do get some type of typical emotions of how people may feel. All right? And then finally, um, I'm able to go back with the client to write their, sen their sentence of their perception of money in regards to the past, the present, and the future. So next time I see you, I hope you have something to share. And if not, we'll keep moving forward with the series on finance and money. Thank you for joining me today, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.